Welcome everyone today. Uh, we wanna give a special welcome to our pre-med pathway students who are joining us today. Congratulations on all of your hard work and acceptance uh, to the university. We're excited to be able to hopefully welcome you to campus this fall as one of our PA pathway students. My name is Joanna Baker and I'm the Director of Transfer and Graduate Admissions. Today, we have two current MCPHS students with us. I will let them introduce themselves. We'll start with Elizabeth. Hi hey everyone, my name is Elizabeth. I'm from New Hampshire. Um, I've been at MCPHS now for five years through the Pathway Program. So now I'm in my second year of the graduate program. Hi, my name is Emma Costello. I'm originally from Simsbury, Connecticut, um, and I am a third year student in the pre-med PA pathway, and I will be starting PA classes this coming fall. Awesome, thank you both so much. Today, um, our goal is to provide you with an in-depth overview of the pathway program, covering both the undergraduate side and the graduate side. Um, that way you have a full picture of what your six years at MCPHS will look like. To start, there are many benefits of being a Pathway student. Uh, first and most importantly, uh, you are guaranteed an interview if you meet the minimum progression requirements. This is huge. Um, it means you have an opportunity no matter what to interview with our faculty if you meet those set requirements. Second, your merit scholarship is renewable for the duration of the program. So if you're awarded a freshman merit award or a first year transfer scholarship that will follow you into the graduate portion, which is a huge benefit as for the PA graduate portion, we typically do not award uh, new merit scholarships for. So you'll have that undergraduate award for all six years. As a Pathways student, you've been accepted on, a, on an accelerated track to earn both your bachelor's of science degree as well as your master's of physician assistant studies degree. You'll be earning this with successful progression in a total of six years. So you'll be cutting off at least one year uh, when you look at the traditional framework of earning a bachelor's degree in four years and then the master's degree in three years. With the PA pathway program here at MCPHS, your undergraduate portion will be through the School of Arts and Sciences as a pre-medical and health studies major. Through this curriculum, you're gonna have an immediate healthcare focus. You'll be covering topics such as interpersonal communication uh, for healthcare professionals, healthcare ethics, and other core classes that are directly related to the healthcare field. In addition to these classes, your curriculum will provide you with all of the required, uh, pre-required courses you need to be eligible for the graduate uh, program. And this combination of healthcare related coursework, prerequisite coursework, and elective coursework is designed to give you a great combination um, and have a strong academic foundation uh, to prepare and enter into the graduate program. Elizabeth is in the graduate portion, so she's had some time to reflect on how the undergraduate portion uh, really prepared her for the, her first uh, year and a half now, almost two years of the grad portion. Elizabeth, do you mind sharing with us how uh, your undergraduate uh, portion of the pathway has helped you prepare for the MPAS? Of course. So going into, you know, the graduate portion, I was, you know, a little bit intimidated as everyone is, but quickly realized that I had a very strong base coming from undergrad. So, you know, the first few years of your undergraduate education are really being built on the basics of, you know, the sciences, the body systems. And I feel like it was a big advantage coming into the graduate program straight from my undergraduate education, not taking a break like some students do because it was so fresh in my mind and I felt like I was in the groove of working hard in those rigorous classes but as we got into the second year as we got into third year we started to get um, some cooler classes like we talked about healthcare ethics interpersonal communication skills and that was just another cool aspect that I got to use in the graduate program um, and I felt like I was off and running in that first year. I was very successful and I've continued that into the second year. Awesome. Thank you so much for sharing. Um, now looking into a little bit more detail of what those first three years look like for you as a future MCPHS student. Your first year at MCPHS Boston, you'll be exposed to many of our support services. And this first introduction of our support structure 
will be uh, introduced to you through your introduction to the major. This course will be taught by a PA faculty member, so someone who works in the PA program, um, and you will be in this course with um, all other PA pathway students. The introduction to the major really gives you a great um, opening to all that MCPHS has to offer. To review some of those uh, support services, I'll go through them quickly. Uh, the first and most importantly, arguably, is our Center for Academic Success and Enrichment, which we call the CASE. The CASE is where you'll have access to your MAC team, which includes a faculty mentor from the School of Arts and Sciences, as well as an academic coach. With this combination of support, you're able to have guidance from a faculty member within the pre-med program to provide you mentorship and support through your undergraduate years. And your academic coach is there to support you through, you know, the general advising uh, aspect of, of, of college life, also time management, reviewing study skills, helping you to find any support services you may need on campus as well. The next department is the Center for Professional and Career Development, which we call the CPCD. For students such as yourselves going on to a professional graduate program, this department is very helpful. They often uh, provide workshops on personal statement writing, resume, interview skills, helping you find experiences in the healthcare field, may it be shadowing, volunteering, or patient care as well. A big piece of the CPCD that many of our PA Pathway students utilize are the mock interviews to help you prepare for your formal interview into the graduate program. And then lastly uh, is our internal admissions counselor uh, who works with all Pathway students. So you will be progressing into the graduate program hopefully and with that progression you will be submitting a graduate application to the PA program and our internal Pathway counselor is there to support you through that process to provide you timeline information, application guidance and planning. Uh, we offer many information sessions to help you stay on track through your undergraduate years to ensure you're doing all that you need to do, all, all that you need to do to achieve your goal of becoming a PA. Emma, in your undergraduate years, have you, are you, or are you using any of these support services? Yeah, so definitely during my first three years at MCPHS, I tried to take um, advantage of a lot of these resources as best I could to help with grades and classes and preparation for PA school. Um, looking at CASE specifically, uh, the Center for Academic Success and Enrichment, two of my favorite things that they offer through the CASE are the tutoring and supplemental instruction courses. So those are both kind of supplemental, um, you know, review sessions, tutoring sessions to take advantage of for any of your classes. One of the biggest differences between high school in college is you're in school all day versus um, in college you're in school for you know a few hours a day and you know just classes here and there instead so taking that extra step and taking the time out of your schedule to go to those extra sessions um, is really beneficial to your grades what I did for a lot of my courses was um, you know go to the same tutoring session every single week I just made it a part of my schedule and that was a really big help um, with my grades you know getting to hear the material from another person that was successful in the class um, was a really great tool to be able to use. The um, CPCD, the Center for Professional and Career Development, has also been an awesome resource that I've utilized. Um, they're great for resume help. I remember that was one of the very first things I did when I got to MCPHS was work on my resume because, you know, it was still this high school resume. I needed to upgrade it a little bit. And so they helped me to figure out how to turn that into my college resume. Um, like Joanna mentioned, they also, you know, will do mock interviews. Um, job postings all the time too. I've gotten a few different jobs actually throughout my years at MCPHS through the CPCD. Um, so it's an amazing resource to take advantage of. And all of that is introduced through your intro to the major course you take as a freshman. I would not have known how to use any of those resources without that class. And um, the PA faculty member that was teaching the class brought in people from all of those different offices to talk to us, to explain to us how to best take advantage of those resources. And that has allowed me to do so over the last three years. Thank you so much for sharing. Um, in moving from your first year to your second year, um, you know, the biggest piece in addition to doing well in your coursework is just uh, tracking to ensure that you're on track to meet the minimum of progression requirements for your program. And so historically, our progression requirements have includes, included some GPA requirements, an overall GPA of a 3.0, a science GPA of a 3.0, 
a prerequisite GPA of a 3.0, and a minimum of 250 patient care hours. I use the term historically because you are uh, a few years out from applying, so it will be important for you to come back to the internal admissions counselor just to ensure you're on track with your class year goals. Um, a big scary piece I think for many students is the hearing that you have to earn patient care hours. And I know Elizabeth and Emma uh, both did different tracks to secure their patient care hours. So I'll have Elizabeth start to share with uh, how she worked to complete her patient care hours and then Emma as well. Yeah, so I became a licensed nursing assistant in New Hampshire where LNA is in Massachusetts, same thing, CNA, certified nursing assistant. This is a pretty popular um, route to getting your patient care hours because it's just, I took a three week course in the summer between my first year and second year at MCPHS. And once I started working at a state facility, I got reimbursed for the cost of the course. So it was, ended up being free to me. And then I was racking up my hours as I was getting paid for my summer job. And I continued doing the job each summer. I continued during some school breaks in the winter when we had plenty of time at home. And by the time I submitted my CASPA application to be accepted into the graduate program, I had over a thousand hours, which is well above the requirement. So I knew that I would satisfy that um, requirement for getting an interview. And it was just a great way to get hands-on experience. Um, you need to be in a personal setting where you're responsible for a patient's care in some ways. So I would take vital signs. I would help the residents at my long-term care facility, you know, complete activities of daily living and help them with each of their meals. So it was rewarding as well as helpful in the program requirements. So I worked as an EMT for my patient care hours. I got my EMT certification through the MCPHS elective course that we offer. Um, this made things really easy because I got to take the course right on campus. It was two nights a week. Um, and it was nice because they walked you through all of those certifications and tests and stuff that you needed to take. A lot of the kind of stuff that comes at the end of all of that. And then they also gave us a lot of connections for some local ambulance companies for once we were finished with the class, if we wanted to work in the area. <clears throat> um, I really liked working as an EMT because it gave me a lot of real applicable um, healthcare experience, exposure to the healthcare world, um, something that I hadn't gotten before working as an EMT. And that also helped me to really apply that uh, stuff I was learning to my application, you know, writing about why I wanted to be a PA, why I wanted to seek this career, and in the interview as well, um, discussing kind of the experience that I had. So 250, like Joanna was saying, may sound daunting, but um, it really is a beneficial tool and it is really, it's not too bad to rack up the hours. Um, like Elizabeth was saying too, it happens a lot quicker than you realize, um, you know, once you have a position and it's just, it's very beneficial to what you're, you're doing and want to understand about your career. Great. Thank you so much both for sharing. Um, Elizabeth mentioned the term CASPA. The next part of your second year, uh, you know, planning purposes is to plan uh, for the CASPA application. It's the national PA application. All students applying to PA school, internal or external, do have to complete the CASPA, but you're lucky in that you'll be able to attend an information session hosted by the admissions office to help you plan out not only your timeline, but set admissions requirements. We'll give you CASPA, you know, tips and tricks uh, to give you an edge up in working through the CASPA um, application. Um, directly and with all the information that we'll be providing you in your second year you'll be able to really plan with what you feel comfortable we will give you uh, an encouraged internal student deadline for your class in this information session so you can work backwards historically it's been early august uh, but we'll update you uh, with this information as well but we want to give you all the tools so when you head out uh, for your summer break between year two and year three you have everything you need to work on your application, but also knowing that we're, we're, we're here all summer. We're gonna be able to help you um, answer any questions that you may have. Emma just went through the application this past summer. Um, so I'll have her briefly just share her experience with us. Sure, so the application process was pretty straightforward, uh, especially when you start it 
um, you know, early on, you're taking a look at it, understanding the requirements that you'll have to fulfill. So there's the section of the application where you're kind of filling out your general information, um, you know, your grades, your transcripts, your letters of rec. Um, and then there's two essay questions that are required for MCPHS. There's the question of why you want to be a PA, and then there's the question of why you want to attend MCPHS. Um, as an internal student, of course, because you've been attending MCPHS for the last three years, you have a lot of really good experiences and information that you can include in that question about why you want to continue your time at MCPHS and uh, work through the PA program at MCPHS. Um, overall, though, it was a you know, good experience. I had a lot of contact with admissions counselors, too, you know, there to answer questions, um, communicating with other students as well that were going through the same thing as me, um, you know, kind of giving each other advice, reading each other's essays, and helping each other out. Um, so it was a pretty straightforward experience, especially as an internal student. Thank you so much. So working on your CASPA over the summer between year two and year three of your undergraduate time, um, and then moving into your third year, you will have submitted your CASPA. If you meet the minimum progression requirements, we will be inviting you to interview in your third year. Um, your interview, depending on um, you know what the world looks like, it could be a Zoom interview, it could be an in-person interview. We'll, you know, hopefully be able to navigate that over the next few years as you, uh, as a future MCPHS student, works work towards your third year of, of undergraduate studies. And with your interview, um, it has looked a little different due to COVID versus Elizabeth and Emma, uh, but the structure overall is the same um, with one-on-one -on -one faculty experiences. Emma just went through it, uh, what, two months ago? Uh, so I'll have her quickly talk about her interview experience as well. Sure. So with my interview experience, um, there were two parts to it. The first part was with a faculty member. So it was one-on-one -on -one and then a one-on-one -on -one interview with an alumni. So the alumni that was interviewing me had graduated, I think, one or two years ago. So she was really young as well. Um, I feel like the interview was a very get to know you type of interview, you know, when they're looking at your CASPA application, they get to see your grades and they get to see all of this kind of factual information about you. So the interview was very uh, trying to see who you are as a person, you know, why you want to be a PA, um, you know, what you do in your free time, even how you got your patient care hours and why that was beneficial and why that helped you to decide you wanted to be a PA. So it was a very, um, you know, kind of relaxed. It wasn't, you know, there wasn't a ton of pressure with it. Um, it was just kind of trying to figure out who you you are as a person and why you should be in this program. Wonderful, thank you. And based off, you know, your interview, your CASPA application and all those pieces, the Faculty Admissions Committee will review all those, uh, you know, key items and decide, you know, if you will be able to be accepted to the graduate program. If you are accepted, uh, the timeline will be pretty quick. You'll have a few weeks to submit your enrollment deposit to commit to the graduate portion. And then from there, your third uh, year is uh, a bit of a breeze. All you have to do is uh, pass all of your coursework and continue to do well academically. And then right at the end of your third year, just like Emma will be wrapping up in the next few months, you'll officially transition into the graduate portion. And so moving on to talk about the PA graduate portion uh, directly and what you can expect in that last three years of your program, we wanna dive into a bit of uh, the structure, faculty, clerkships, and everything in between. The graduate program itself is a total of three years. It's encompassed of two academic years and then one year of clerkships. Some programs call them clinical rotations, but field work, uh, working as a PA. Um, we're gonna have Elizabeth share uh, in her experience, you know, what those graduate courses look like. So your first year in the graduate program, your classes are going to be, you know, kind of foundational preparing you for your second year and for your clinicals. So we take one course is called pathophysiology, which basically means disease processes of the body and what's happening when things aren't going normally. So we go system by system um, and we go through, you know, very common diseases that we'll be in contact with out working with patients. We have a class called pharmacology, which is an introduction to commonly prescribed drugs and disease processes, you know, reasons why not to give them to someone or to give them to someone. An intro into a little bit of public health, a little bit of genetics, which is really cool. I'm not sure that that's a very common um, subject matter in a lot of courses, but we have a professor who's really passionate about, you know, genetic um, advances. So that was awesome. 
And then something to really look forward to is in the spring of your first year, students are working with Harvard Medical School in their gross anatomy course. So this is a course where you're really working hands-on in a lab setting, working with cadavers to get a very real sense of um, you know, bone structure, muscles, nerves, and you're personally dissecting these cadavers and getting comfortable with the anatomy. So that is an amazing, amazing experience um, to look forward to in your first year. And then it gets even more exciting in your second. We are diving into um, clinical medicine courses, which is really, we call it your file cabinet of all the information you're going to have access to on rotations in your brain. So going again, system by system, and this time, you know, acting as the provider, what would you do in this situation? What would be you know, your course of action for someone coming in with chest pain and things like that. And then, you know, diving deeper into some um, courses on, you know, prescribing medication, getting comfortable with that, um, all before we go out and see our first patients on uh, clinical rotations in our third year. So I just want to go over schedule wise, we're kind of told to be available about eight to three Monday through Friday. But I know that Tuesdays and Thursdays for us are much lighter. So even though eight to three every day sounds like a lot, we have two days of the week that are you know, much more free time to get a lot of studying done or to do some extracurricular activities as well. Thanks so much for sharing. A big piece of uh, most PA programs are the clerkship experiences. Our program is structured to cover seven core topics, including internal medicine, pediatrics, psychiatry, surgery, uh, surgery, comma, emergency medicine, women's health, and family medicine. So your uh, elective rotate or your clerkship rotations, you will cover all seven of these topics. In addition to those seven, you'll also have two elective rotations. Um, so depending on you know, your goals as a future PA, these elective rotations can be back within one of these seven uh, topics, or it could be outside of those seven topics, and you'll work with, you know, faculty and organizing those elective rotations. We do also offer uh, some elective rotations abroad um, that could be available to students as well. Elizabeth is starting to plan for her clerkship rotations, um, and it's, it's a big uh, planning process as she has uh, the ability to also create some of her own rotation. So I'll have her share a little bit of that as well. Yes, so spring semester of your second um, year in the graduate program, we're introduced to a process called preferencing. So when it comes to rotations, we get a whole long list of, you know, regions of the country as well as, you know, areas of medicine that we need to complete these rotations in. And we're basically ranking them about, you know, where we want to be to do these rotations. And then we will get our clinical rotation schedule and kind of go from there. So a real um, advantage to our program is that we have clinical clerkship um, agreements and connections throughout the whole country. So if you're not from the New England area, you in no way need to stay hooked to this area in your third year of the program. You can go back out to the West Coast. We have a lot in the Midwest as well. So you can kind of dabble around if you just want to travel a little bit, get out of Boston for the winter, go down south. That is completely doable. And Joanna kind of mentioned that you are also able to set up your own rotations, which the school doesn't already have connections with. So I'm actually in the process of doing that with a few um, sites that I have interest in rotating at. So it's a fairly easy process. You basically find someone who agrees to take you on as a student for about five weeks, and they just fill out some paperwork with our school and uh, form an agreement. So that isn't necessarily common in all PA programs. It just opens up opportunities for our students to get in um, in more sites um, that they would like to. So definitely an advantage. Um, another advantage is you don't necessarily have to have all nine of your rotations planned out when you go start your rotation year. Um, you can get that kind of organized as you go and just make sure it's done a few months before you would start that rotation. It's very exciting. It's amazing to know that you'll be picking your rotations and, and being assigned to them in just about a month. Time is flying fast, Elizabeth. Um, another big piece of graduate programming and planning for your future is, you know, campus community and faculty 
relationships with students. Um, you know, you'll be at MCPHS hopefully for the next six years and looking out towards the graduate portion, you know, understanding what uh, kind of you'll be diving into community and faculty wise, I think is always very helpful to know. Um, Elizabeth, could you share um, a little bit of your experience with faculty and what the graduate community looks like? Yeah, I was really impressed. My first, you know, um, first impressions of the faculty in the graduate program came on my interview day when I got to go and, you know, meet some of them to interview with. They give us an overview of the program. And I was just, I felt very confident that this was a real like family dynamic. They, they knew everyone in the program by name. They get so comfortable with the students. It's very much an open door policy. You know, professors have certain office hours, but it's really as if they're in the building, they want you to come talk to them. And they're just really devoted to the success of the program. If you are in the graduate program, they absolutely want to see you get through it and find, you know, success in it along the way. So they are really one of my favorite parts of the program. Um, we have a, a class in second year that's physical exam and history taking lab. And that's when we all come together, we practice real hands on, you know, how to take a physical exam, how to interview a patient. And what I love about that is that we have like seven to 10 of the PA faculty in those labs all at once. Um, and it's just a better chance to meet everyone and get some real good one on one advice about how they like to do this in practice. Um, and it, I'll be sad to leave. Basically, I'll be really sad to go out on clinical rotations and not be in contact with these professors every day. Thank you so much for sharing. Elizabeth touches upon um, our last topic, which is success uh, in the program and post graduation. Um, our pants pass rate, which is the national exam uh, for PA uh, students and, and entering into the profession, um, has a five year test taker average that pants puts out and we're really proud to say that our five year first time test taker average is 97%. So 97% of our students in the last five years sitting for the exam on the first attempt uh, did pass, which we are, as a university, you know, very pleased with. Um, the last point Elizabeth is going to share a little bit about is just the preparation that she's experienced thus far in her first half of the graduate program, and then the expected support and preparation that she'll have uh, while she is on clerkship still planning out for that pants examination. So even though by the time you're entering into the graduate portion of the PA program, you know, the pants is technically like three years away, you know, it's on the front of everyone's minds from the moment you start the program. And that's really beneficial because they start writing your exams as if they're board questions. So, so when you go and take your pants, you're not blindsided by, you know, maybe a longer question that's a real clinical case. Um, we start getting introduced to those types of questions very early on in the program, so much so that right now, spring semester of my second year, that's pretty much all I know is how to answer those types of questions. Um, even, you know, we go off on clinical rotations in our third year, and that's when the faculty really start to follow us and make sure we're preparing for the pants exam by taking end of rotation exams. So we come back after every single five week rotation and take um, an extensive exam that's specific to the area of medicine that we just did a rotation in. So that way we know, you know, 20% of the pants could be on cardiac information. So we just took a whole exam to prepare us for that section of the pants. And, you know, we do different, um, you know, PACRA is a practice pants exam. We do those at the end of rotation as well. And basically all this information allows your professors to get a really personalized view if you personally at the end of graduation are ready to take the pants exam and be successful in passing it on your first try you know within the next few weeks or months or if they recommend you take some time off and you really dive into studying more before you take it so i think it's amazing that by the time we wrap up the program that our program director has a personal recommendation for every single one of us about whether he feels like we're prepared to really sit for it you know that week or not so i feel confident that by the time i'm there it's going to be something i'm really prepared for Thank you so much for sharing. Um, Elizabeth and Emma, our last piece for uh, our PA pathway group that we're meeting with today. If you could give uh, uh, future pathway students, such as those in our audience, one piece of advice uh, to prepare, what would that be? Emma, we'll let you go first. 
Sure. So my biggest piece of advice is, you know, a lot of this stuff we're talking about, it may sound kind of daunting now, you know, there's just this big list of things you need to do. But if you start early and you remember that all the resources that are available to you, everybody's on your side, you know, um, they want you to succeed. So if you use that uh, to your ability and your, um, you know, to the best of your ability, uh, you can really take advantage of it and you can succeed. Um, you know, all you have to do is, you know, work on it. It starts your freshman year as soon as you walk in the door. So, you know, start thinking about it then, start focusing on it then, and it will all just kind of fall into place as time goes on. You know, kind of echoing that, I would say just trust that the pathway was really built for you and for your success going all the way through the graduate program. So we've talked a lot about individual components here, but just know that if you're, you know, attentive to paying attention when there are like PA information sessions and, you know, next step in the process that it, you will not be left behind. You're, you're going to go and, and complete each step of the way and it's nothing to be stressed about, certainly not right now. And also just be excited. I was I was so excited when I was in your shoes, even like looking forward to the graduate program, which is a ways away, but there's so much to look forward to in the undergrad years as well. And just don't let, you know, stress or being overwhelmed cloud, like how much you just love, you know, the idea of being a future healthcare professional and, you know, what you're gonna do to um, achieve that in just the next couple of years. Thank you both so much. And thank you for taking time out of your busy schedules to join us today. Thank you to the families and uh, admitted students who are watching in. Um, if you do have any additional questions about your uh, individual acceptance, any questions on what we covered today about your pathway, you're welcome to sign up for an individual counselor appointment at any time. We're happy to speak to you more in depth about anything that was covered today or if you have additional questions. Um, on behalf of Emma and Elizabeth, we all look forward to welcoming you to MCPHS this fall. Thank you so much.